We need to add to that. All right. Well, turn in your Bibles to Acts, or I keep saying Acts, to Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. Stand if you have your place there. We're talking about an altar tonight, or not a altar, but the altar. You know, just as there is an altar in the Old Testament, and what we're reading tonight is the very first time in Scripture where we see that an altar was constructed for the worship and the praise of the Father. So, act. Uh, Genesis. I don't know why I keep saying that. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. The Bible says, And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, of every clean fowl, and, burnt, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come to your house tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, that um, that you blessed us with a great day. Father, we do lift up Preacher Fred tonight. Lord, I know he's not feeling well. Lord, his legs hurt and bothering him. Father, we lift up Miss Glenda tonight, Father, as she's continuing, Lord, just to uh, go through her treatments. Father, we pray for uh, Brother Doug Hawkins tonight, Lord, as he's um, still trying to, to get all that fluid off of him, Lord, there in the hospital. God, I pray that you'd bless uh, him and all those nurses, Lord, just be with Miss Lynn. Linda, Lord. <clears throat> Father, we praise you, Lord, for, for little Wiley being home. God, what a blessing that is, Father. What a great thing, Lord, just to see uh, Miss Terry and Brother Bobby, Lord, being here tonight with us to worship again. Lord, I know they're glad to be here. And, Lord, we just pray that all that's said and done tonight, Lord, would just give you praise, honor, and glory. Father, as we talk about the altar, Lord, may we, uh, may we find the importance of that altar uh, once again. Father, remind us of it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Thank you for standing with me. So what is an altar, or why is an altar important? Is an altar still important? I would say tonight that I believe 100% that an altar is still important tonight. Uh, I believe 100% that the cross and the man that was on the cross, most importantly, is still important tonight. I believe his blood is still saving people tonight. So I believe that an altar is important. But how would we define an altar? This is the best definition I can find. It's a structure used in worship as a place for representing sacrifices to God. Now, as we just read in Genesis 8:20, this is the first offering or the first uh, uh, altar that was built to give God glory. Now, you look back uh, from. Genesis 7 and Genesis 8, where they built the ark, where they were in, <coughs> they were in the, um, they were in the ark for 371 days. No doubt that, uh, no doubt that Noah and his family was happy to see the ground. I tell you, whenever we came back uh, Tuesday, me and my friend, when we uh, finally got back to Spartanburg, man, I was coming down Soapstone Road. I've never in my life been so happy to see Tara and Bobby's house because I knew once I saw their house, it was only about a half a mile and I was going to get to the I was going to get to our house and man when I stopped and parked that thing I laid out in the front yard I was so glad just to be off that thing and be here could you imagine being on a boat for 371 days being inside here in the rain and then knowing that it was sunny but you still couldn't get out because the waters hadn't receded fully yet because you see God in this text in Genesis chapter 7 and chapter 8 God didn't want them to get off on muddy ground he wanted them he wanted it to be just right. He wanted it to be dry, just like the Israelites. Man, when they come over, uh, when they come over the Red Sea, that dry, the Bible says that it wasn't even muddy, it wasn't soupy, it was dry ground. He wanted sure footing for the people of God to go across that Red Sea. When they crossed the Jordan, he wanted them to have sure footing when they crossed that Jordan. When uh, Noah and his family come out, he wanted them to have sure footing whenever they come out of that boat. And the same thing with us tonight, he wants us as believers to have sure footing every step of the way that we walk for the Lord. <clears throat> so Noah and his family, they were happy, no doubt. The Bible says first thing they did was build an altar to give God praise for all that he had done over the last year for them, 371 days. He give them, he give the Lord praise. So an Old Testament altar 
The, I guess you would say the Hebrew word for this is slaughter, which literally means a slaughter place. That is the Old Testament version or the Old Testament word of an altar. Now today we don't have to praise God. Today we don't have to go and slaughter animals and bring them to our altar and, and, and sprinkle the blood on the altar. I praise the Lord for that, that we don't have to do that anymore. But it is a place for sacrifice. You see, you say, well, why don't we have to do that anymore. Here's why. Because Jesus is the sacrifice. Every sacrifice they made up to the point, uh, up to the point of Jesus, those were just sacrifices to, to be made until the real sacrifice came, until the main sacrifice came. But you see, the altar today, this is what we have tonight. Our altar today is still a place for sacrifice. It is still a place to come and give up the things that uh, that calls a wedge between us and the Lord. If it's your cell phone, you need to come and offer that unto the Lord. If it is a, a sin in your life that separates you, uh, separates you between you and the Lord, you need to come and sacrifice those things. Serving the Lord is a relationship that involves sacrifice. It involves giving up things that are causing you to veer away from the presence of of God, the main Old Testament, uh, mainly used for animal sacrifices, but there was also grain sacrifices, fruit sacrifices, these different offerings, offerings of the incense. All of these things were made, but they were made at the altar. Why were they made at the altar? Because they were giving it to God. They were saying, God, this belongs to you. So why is it important Tonight, Why is it important to get up from your seats and make the walk down the aisle of a church and kneel down if you're able, I know if you're able, to kneel down at an altar of God? What makes this so much more important than sitting down in the pew that you're in and just bowing your head and praying? Well, here's what the... Here's what I feel like the, the Bible teaches, and this is also the frame of mind that we have today. Folks today are willing to argue and dispute about what is called the old-fashioned types of religion or, or things in the church, whether it's the way people dress, whether it's the type of whether you have pews or whether you have chairs or whether you have an altar or whether you have a stage. You see, we're, we're willing to fight and to cling to all those things, but only if it's convenient for us. It has nothing to do with what the Word of God says. If we think this altar is important, then we need to use it as though the altar is important tonight. We need to come and pray and offer these things unto the Lord because we can't pick and choose which parts of the Bible that we're going to firmly stand upon and which ones we're just going to let slide because in our hearts it doesn't mean anything. You see, these different sacrifices or offerings were presented uh, they were presented to the priests in baskets. You can go to Deuteronomy chapter 26. These offerings were given in baskets and they were given to the priest. Now tonight I don't want you to confuse an altar and a temple because those are two different things. That's like saying an altar in this church is the same thing as the building of this church. Those are two separate things. A temple implies a building, a structured building, whereas an altar is implied just a place of worship, a open structure. Now, if you can read through the Bible, you can find that there are minimal three different types of altars. I'm sure you can probably look and find many, but I've kind of categorized them in, in simply just three different types. The first one uh, that I want to look at is just a simple mud brick, roughly shaped altar. You can go onto uh, Google Images and type in Old Testament altars, and you can find all types of pictures. Uh, be careful, of course, but you can find all types of pictures of different altars. Now, you read this about Noah in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. It simply says, Noah built an altar unto the Lord. What did that altar consist of? 
Well, we know that uh, obviously he didn't have a whole lot of resources. He had been on a boat for 371 days. He come into this, uh, into this mountain and he didn't know what was around. He built more than likely, he built a simple altar. He may have just simply stacked some rocks up, stacked some sticks up. He built an altar and said, God, I'm giving this to you because I love you so much. I appreciate you so much. You have saved us. You have helped us build this altar. You have kept us from drowning. You have brought us to this dry place. Noah was simply saying, thank you, God. And all he did was build what simply he could build. There was no carpet, there was no pews, there were no chairs, there were no tables, there were none of the things, there were no lights, there were no screens, there were none of the things that we have today. And you know what the amazing thing is tonight? God accepted what Noah did. And he simply just had what he had. And that was it. You see, we overcomplicate so many things in the churches today. God simply wants us to worship him from a pure heart to a pure God. We overcomplicate what the altar is. It was just a place to worship God. You see, when we come in here tonight, our frame of mind should be this is just a place to worship God. Now, it's a blessing to have the things that we have. I'm thankful to have the air condition that we have. I'm thankful to have the chairs and the pews and, and all the things that we have in here tonight. But what's the most important thing? The Father is the most important thing in this room tonight. He is the most important Thing. Somebody, you know, if we come and, and, and totally wipe this room clean and it was nothing but a floor and an altar, you know, there'd be some people that get upset when they come in here. But what did Noah have? Noah had a ground and a pile of some sticks and rocks and God accepted that offering. You see, it's not about the things that we have. It's about the God that we're worshiping. You see, this was a, an Old Testament altar. It was simply a mud and brick, roughly shaped pile of dirt. And God accepted that. A second type of altar is a, is a stone altar. And there's many, uh, there's many places throughout the Old Testament that talk about these stone altars. Judges chapter 6 and 13, 1 Samuel 14, Exodus 20, 1 Kings 18, just a few. These are stone altars that were built, that were structured. Uh, people, men would come and build these altars. These altars had been found. They have been found through uh, excavations in Palestine. They would find these altars. These were stone altars. You know, there was a, a rule of Hebrew altars and Canaanite altars. And tell me if this don't sound like a, like a Baptist situation right here. Hebrew altars were not allowed to have steps leading up to their altars. You know why they weren't allowed to have steps? Because the Canaanite altars had steps. That, that is a fact. That's the reason they couldn't have them. Is the Hebrews didn't want to be like the Canaanites, so they were not allowed to put steps on their altars. You see, they were getting away from the purpose of the altar. It doesn't matter if you look like this person or look like this group or you act like. It's about the one that you're giving the sacrifices to. It's not about what the altar looks like. It's not about what surrounds the altar. It's about what happens at the altar. It's about having that pure heart and going to the Father to simply say thank you. To simply offer up your prayer concerns. But does an altar have to be in a church? Of course not. We're reading this in, in Genesis 8.20. This was not in a church. It was, it was on a mountain. It was on the side of a hill. I wonder how many altars tonight are going to be on a bedside of a, of a bedroom. I wonder how many altars are going to be out on the front porch or the back porch of a house where people are just telling God thank you for all things. I wonder how many altars are going to be at a kitchen table somewhere tonight where people are pouring their heart out to the Father because they're in a desperate need to be healed. You see, an altar doesn't have to be in a church tonight. 
but I'm going to say this. Since the altar is here in a church tonight, it needs to be used in a church tonight. Not just on Wednesday night, but every time the doors are open, our altar should be used often. There was a type of offering. There was a type of, uh, in the Old Testament, there was a, a bronze altar that was made. You can read in the, the, uh, the Temple of Solomon. Man, if you've never read how that temple was constructed, I encourage you to read about Solomon's temple. It is an amazing thing what God did uh, to build Solomon's temple there. But it was about 30 square foot and about 15 foot high. It was a massive altar. But then there was also golden, golden altars or an altar of incense. If you read the Old Testament, you'll, you'll see that phrase oftentimes, the altar of incense. The altar of incense was located was located in the inner room of the sanctuaries just outside the Holy of Holies. This altar was made of acacia wood, and it was overlaid with gold. This was a beautiful altar. By what we read, it was a beautiful altar. You see, there's all different types of altars. There's all different places of altars. But the main thing I'm trying to get to you tonight, that it's not where the altar is. It's not what the altar looks like. It's about worshiping the Father at the altar. You see, there was one that was also in the Old Testament called the high place. These were raised platforms where sacrifices and rituals took place, where sacrifices and rituals. If you read in 1 Kings, there was a time where Adonijah was running from Solomon. And as he was running from Solomon, he knew that Solomon was going to kill him. And there was a thing on the altar, and it was called the horns of the altar. You can read about it in 1 Kings, talking about the horns of the altar. And the purpose, or one of the reasons of this horns of this altar, was of safety. Adonijah knew that if he came running to the altar, and he grabbed a hold of the horns of that altar, that Solomon could not kill him. That was the law. You couldn't kill somebody if they were holding on to the horns of the altar. I believe tonight that we have forgotten the safety that comes along with the altar that we have today. You know, being there, I remember as a, as a child, uh, I, would, I did not sleep well as a kid. I was afraid that, that something was going to get me all the time when I was asleep, especially when I could look underneath our, uh, my, the door of our bedroom. And I can tell all the lights in the house were out. I, I was just scared. I didn't sleep good. And there were several times that I would get up in the middle of the night and I would walk through our house and with a blanket and a pillow and I would lay down there at the foot of my parents' bed. They didn't know I was there. Daddy stepped on me one night, one morning. He was getting up for work and sure enough, he stepped on me. He didn't know I was there. But there was something comfortable for me being there at the foot of their bed, even though I was in the floor, I felt comfort, I felt peace because there was security being there in the same room as my mother and my father. There was comfort in that. You see tonight, the Bible teaches that the altar is a place of comfort. It's a place where you can grab and hold on to it and you feel as though you are safe there in the presence of God. You feel as though you are covered with the, with the comfort that comes from only the Father. You see, if my mom would have been in that bedroom, I probably wouldn't have went in there because there ain't nothing a whole lot more she can do that I could do. But my dad was in that room and I was comforted when he was around. You see, when, my, when I get next and close to my heavenly father, I feel comfort in that because I can feel his presence. There's something special about drawing close to the father. He tells us that if we will draw nigh unto him, he will draw nigh unto us, right? That's what the word of God says. There is comfort. There is a, a form of protection that comes along with being there at an altar with the Father. You see, those horns were used for, for other things, though. That was a place where they would uh, sprinkle the blood of a sacrificed animal. It was used for the atonement of sin. They would kill these animals, and they would toss the blood onto the horns of these altars. The horns were used for many things. They knew that it was something special when they were approaching 
the altar in the Old Testament? What do you feel when you approach the altar today? Do you feel shame when you approach an altar? We shouldn't. Church, even if we have sin in our heart and we're going down to confess those sins to the Father, we don't need to feel shame in our heart approaching the altar of God. But I do believe we need to feel as though we are, we are approaching the Holy of Holies just like it was in Solomon's temple. There's something special about an altar. And I know there's some folks tonight, and there may be some younger folks, maybe some older folks tonight in this world that says the altar is no longer important. Some churches don't even have altars anymore. But I believe they are still of importance. I believe altars are still of importance. But I talked about the Old Testament, but you could even go into the New Testament and see how important the altar was even in the New Testament. We are the New Testament church tonight. I hope you understand that and realize that. The Greek word for New Testament altar is simply this. It is a place of sacrifice. It is a place of worship, settling the sin in your heart. It is a place of proper worship. You know, the one of the, or many of the people in the New Testament, they would build an altar, and even in the Old Testament, they would build an altar at a place where God showed up. Because the people would think, if God showed up once here at this place, that there's a high chance that he's going to show up again at this place. So when God would show up, they would build an altar there in preparation for him to come back again and they could worship him again. You see, I believe in, with all of my heart that God has showed up here in this church. He has showed up here at this altar. And if he showed up once, we can better believe that he's going to show up again. We need to come to this altar in preparation for the appearance of the Father, for the feeling of the Father, of the worship of the Father. You see, they would build those altars because they just knew if he came back once, he was coming back again to that same place. You know, there's some of the times that, man, I love, and I love Sunday morning, don't get me wrong, but some of the Sunday night services and Wednesday night services feel so amazing compared. And I don't know why they that is. Y'all ever feel that way? That those evening services sometimes are just something special about them. You see, the altar was the presence of God. What is the altar? What does the altar mean to you today? And I know we've got a lot of, you know, some young folks in here tonight, and they, they may have never even been taught what an altar is or what the purpose of it is for. I know when I was younger, I didn't understand why all these people came down and knelt down and they prayed, and what's the purpose, and, and why do you do that? Listen, you do it because you serve a holy God. You serve a holy God. He is, in, he is deserving of all the praise and worship that we possibly can. And so I served at a uh, last church that we served at, at Mount Pleasant. The, I had, was talking to them about an altar one time, and, and the same thing is with here. Now, there, their steps went all the way across. Uh, there were steps went all the way across, whereas here there's just steps on either side. But in most churches you go into... And I don't mean anything by this. I'm just being honest with you, okay? So don't just calm down for a second. Hear me out. Most of our Baptist churches, 60% of our altar is covered up with furniture. 60%. I've walked it off. 60% of our altars are covered up with furniture. What is the purpose of the altar at this church? Now, I have nothing wrong with any of this stuff. Don't misunderstand me. But what's the main purpose of an altar? It's to worship the Father. It's to gather around the place of God and give Him thanks. You see, I'm, again, I'm not saying anything wrong with any of the furniture that we have, but what I'm saying is sometimes we lose sight of the original purpose of an altar. You read in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20, there wasn't a piece of furniture there at that altar. It was a pile of sticks and rocks, and it was there to worship the Father. You see, I believe just like so many altars and churches today, our, our bodies and our lives as believers is much like that. You see, there is an original purpose there, but it's buried so far deep in things in our life 
that we have forgotten the true purpose of it. The true purpose of this, I believe, when it was built was a place to worship. And I don't know at all because obviously I wasn't here. Uh, I wasn't even born, I don't think. It was 70, when was this church built? 70 something, right? Something like that. I, I wasn't born to 83, so I wasn't even born when this church was built. But I would imagine when this church was built, there might have been a chance where people come down here and prayed at this altar before the building was even finished. There was a possibility of it. But they were praying for this altar to be filled, possibly, for years and years and years to come, for God to, be, for God to use the people in this church, for God to use this community. You see, a long time ago, he saved some of us. And when he saved us, he saved us for a purpose. And that purpose was to be used by God, to be his hands and to be his feet, to be vessels for the kingdom of, the, for the kingdom of God. But over time, over time, we've added all kind of things to our life. And we've lost touch with the true purpose of why he saved us. It's not about being seen. It's not about how much you can post on social media. It's not about even the things that we think it's about, even church. God saved us so that we can be the salt and light of this world. That's it. So that we may be vessels for him so other people can come to know him. You see, this altar tonight, I believe... It would be good if we can get focus back on the reason that we come to church, and it's to give God praise. When we sing, that's why we're here. Not to, not to have empty words come out of our lips, but with all of our heart, give Him praise for everything He has brought us through and everything He will bring us through. We give Him praise. When we're here and we have all of these prayer concerns and heavy hearts, we go to an altar because we know that we still serve a risen Savior. We know that the tomb is empty. We know that our Father is seated at the right hand tonight. We know that. And for that, we gather around an altar. So tonight, I know Wednesday nights is our nights of prayer concerns. But I know that your heart tonight, no doubt, is full of prayer concerns. But I want to give a praise report. Mr. Wiley is back in Cherokee County, and I am thankful for that. Well, I guess he's in Spartanburg County, technically, ain't he? He's close to Cherokee County, but I'm glad he's home. I guarantee he is. You see, tonight we have a reason to go to the Father. We have a reason to go to an altar. Miss Galinda, would you mind coming and playing tonight? I know we all have burdens. We all have issues. But tonight is about... Not, not steps, not carpet, not chairs. It's not even about altars. But it's about who's at the altar. And that's the Father. If you would stand with me tonight, we're going to have a time of invitation. Anything on your heart tonight that you need to come pray about, at any time God tells you, you pray. Let's go to the Lord tonight. Father God, we're thankful, God, that we can be in a place... Father, of your dwelling. Lord, I'm thankful for this house, Lord, that is yours. God, but I'm even more thankful of this altar, God, that is most importantly yours. Father, we have burdened hearts tonight. We all have concerns and prayer requests. And Lord, I ask, Father, that you would meet those needs. God, as we pour them down, God, as this is, as we've talked tonight, Lord, the altar is a place, a sacrificial place. And Father, may we lay those things down, Lord, that are causing a wall to come up between us and you. Father, may we lay our burdens down of those that are sick or hurting. God, you tell us to, to lay down our burdens, but take upon your yoke because it's light and it's easy. Lord, I pray tonight would be a time of worship, God, and just giving all things to you. We love you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If God's calling you to come pray this morning or tonight, you come and pray.